Hi, today I prepared uh, two multiply choice questions for you and this both questions about population genetics and uh, this is very easy questions so I recommend you to stop video here try to solve each problem on your own and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation so here is the first uh, question which of the following populations has uh, dominant allele A uh, with frequency of the 0 0.5 and here is the four answers to choose from and uh, let me explain how we are going to calculate frequencies so uh, when we have three genotypes one is homozygous dominant another one is heterozygous and uh, another one would be homozygous recessive and there can be different frequencies of each, but uh, when we add all the three uh, genotypes, the allelic frequency should equal to 100%. And um, of course, uh, we have only two types of alleles here, and here would be dominant allele, and uh, another type would be uh, recessive allele. So as you see only those we have three genotypes we have only two uh, alleles that make uh, these three genotypes. And uh, now let's uh, start with answer A. Uh, here we have 25% uh, genotype that is uh, dominant, uh, homozygous dominant, 25% that is uh, um, recessive and 50% that is uh, heterozygous and in order to count uh, allele frequencies we are going to use simple rule for example if we need to find uh, frequencies of the dominant alleles we have to add uh, this number here plus one half of the frequency of the heterozygous genotype and when we need to find out uh, frequency of the recessive allele once again we have to add uh, this frequency plus one half of the uh, recessive allele in the heterozygous uh, genotype so let's uh, do it for the answer A so we have 20 uh, uh, percent frequency of the homozygous dominant and we have 25 uh, 25% percent heteros uh, homozygous recessive genotype and 50% we have here for the heterozygous genotype so according to our formula that I show you above we have to add to this number one half of uh, 50 percent so total here would be 25 plus 25 50 percent and of course if we have 50 percent here we would have 50 percent here because total number uh, of the whole uh, of the dominant allele and recessive allele should equal to one so that means that uh, this uh, first answer would be correct. The frequency of the dominant allele here would be 50%. And 50% and 0 0.5 are the same numbers, but on the different scales. For, for example, 0 0.5 is a, a question on the scale between 0 and 1, and 50%, um, for example, is on the scale between 0 and 100 percent. So as you see um, uh, 1 equals to 100 percent and for example 50 percent would equal to 0 0.5 so this is the same numbers. So um, let's move to the uh, quest, uh, answer B. Here we have uh, 20 percent of the 
homozygous uh, dominant genotype and 60% of the heterozygous and 20 homozygous recessive. And once again, 20 plus one half of the heterozygous, this is going to be um, 30, so 20 plus 30, 50%. And um, the same for the uh, homozygous, uh, I'm sorry, for the recessive allele. So we can also circle this answer. Here we would also have 50% of the dominant allele. And uh, answer C, 100% uh, when we have uh, only one genotype, when we don't have, for example, this genotype and this genotype, and uh, this would be the only genotype that we have. And um, this is can happen, for example, when we have hybrid, and uh, some hybrids, when we have two uh, pure lines, when we cross them, 100% can uh, be belong to the heterozygous uh, genotype. So if we have 100% of the heterozygous genotype, that means that 50% would be a dominant allele, and 50% would be recessive allele, and this is going to be the only genotype present uh, in such um, population. So answer C also uh, meet our requirements, and that means that uh, the correct answer would be answer D, uh, all of this. So uh, this is going to be the correct answer. And now we can move to the next question. Uh, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium almost uh, never occurs in nature, but it is still of great interest because it describes a situation in which, and here are the four answers, answer A, the rate of origin of new species is maximized, answer B, outcrossing is uh, maximized, answer C, evolution is not occurring, and D, uh, maladapted uh, species will be eliminated. So uh, let's start with answer A, the rate of origin of new species is maximized. And this is not true, because I want you to pay attention to this word equilibrium. Means that uh, actually nothing happens and uh, this society should be stable. And what do we mean under stable society? That means that when we have three genotypes, for example, once again, uh, this can be homozygous dominant, heterozygous and homozygous recessive with different frequencies, for example, uh, 70% and uh, 20% and 10%. Once again, when we add up all the three uh, genotypes, they should be equal to 100%. And that means stable society means that uh, one generation after another and after another, so for many, many generations, these frequencies for these three genotypes would be stable and wouldn't change. So even after 100 generations, uh, this uh, genotype here would be present in the gene pool at uh, 70%. And uh, uh, this genotype, that is heterozygous, would be present at 20%, and this genotype would be present at uh, 10%. So there wouldn't be any selection against any of the uh, uh, genotypes, and there wouldn't be any preferences in mating between these genotypes. So we can uh, cross out uh, answer A. The rate of origins uh, uh, of new species is maximized because this is exactly on the contrary what happens. Uh, such society should be just uh, stable. Answer B, outcrossing is maximized, is also we can cross out this uh, uh, answer because when we have two, for example, um, populations, when uh, we are talking about outcrossing, we should have uh, two populations, and uh, due to migration, for example, pollen 
or if it is my uh, animals this can be physical migration uh, to societies to uh, gene pools uh, can represent different frequencies of alleles and uh, of course uh, this might lead that this uh, society uh, might change uh, because uh, allelic frequency would change due to migration so um, we are saying that there shouldn't be any outcrossing so outcrossing is maximized is uh, um, answer that is incorrect and uh, answer d and c left and answer d uh, maladapted species will be eliminated and uh, once again when we for example would have uh, eliminated this genotype the frequencies of this two left would change because these frequencies have to uh, adapt and become 100%. When we add uh, these two frequencies, for example, now if we add 70 plus 20, we are going to get 90, but we should get 100%. Uh, so frequencies uh, might change. For example, this might become 30% or they might... Uh, uh, increase uh, simultaneously so here we might have 75 and here we may have increased to 25 percent and uh, anyway we are going to lose this genotype completely and that means that frequencies have changed so uh, we also can um, cross out answer d because this leads to uh, change in allelic frequency in such society and uh, we are looking for equilibrium in Hardy-Weinberg uh, formula uh, or uh, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium where uh, we uh, expect that uh, allelic frequencies wouldn't change and society uh, wouldn't change. And that means when society doesn't change, that means that evolution is not occurring. And this is answer C. So this is correct answer. And this is all for today. Thank you for attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.